Hello everyone. So today we're going to be looking at a few different mechanical design tools. Um, the, the surface modeling tool Rhino, the mechanical design tool SolidWorks, and the free mechanical browser-based uh, CAD package called Onshape. And the first test I'm going to be doing is modeling some electronics components because, well, EEV blog. The upcoming tests are designed to stress these packages and they're quite diverse tests, each thing kind of targeting a different problem that a lot of CAD packages have and by no means am I using even close to the full feature set of any of these tools. Onshape and um, SolidWorks both have great parametric design facilities and Rhino has um, all kinds of advanced surface modeling uh, tools and uh, SolidWorks and Rhino have excellent renderers and SolidWorks has an excellent simulator and all kinds of things that I'm not even close to fully utilizing. The next test is of modeling a Worth transformer. Um, this thing doesn't have all the data in the data sheet so I had to wing it for some of it but I thought this made a good test to compare the 3D modeling capabilities with respect to electronics components. Alright so the first test being modeling a Worth transformer um, you'll notice that the Rhino package really flies out of the gate here. It has no real need to um, set up constraints, so you're not you're not slowed down by the process of thinking how to constrain all the geometry. You can kind of just go ahead and do it. Um, the constraints in Onshape and SolidWorks are actually quite similar, and while it slows down the modeling process, it makes the model much more versatile and flexible. If I were to change, um, for example, the fillet radius in Onshape or SolidWorks, it would be a totally trivial thing. Um, but if I were to do that in Rhino, I would have to uh, basically delete the existing fillets and then and then redraw a whole bunch of stuff, and it would really be a pain. So you really need to know what you're doing in Rhino before you start. So uh, Rhino here, I'm already drawing the pins, and as I am in SolidWorks, but on shape it has barely has barely um, gotten the base plate done. Um, uh, SolidWorks here, the, the sketch editor has some, some trouble with the constraints, so that's what I'm trying to do in the SolidWorks window to the bottom left, and I'm really having some trouble. I actually leave it unconstrained because it was just making the test irrelevant because it was taking so long to fully constrain the drawing. That means that um, uh, all the geometry has formulated positions. So Rhino's actually finished at this point, and SolidWorks and Onshape haven't even got the pins finished, and Onshape hasn't even got the single pin profile finished, so um, really Rhino did quite excellently here. Um, SolidWorks is basically finished at this point, all the pins are, are set up in an array, and I'm just setting up the materials so that um, it appears like a transformer. Probably should have picked a different color than that copper. Onshape doesn't actually have a material um, properties thing, or well, it kind of does, but it doesn't set up like textures or, or anything like that. And you'll notice that despite all the, the problems in Onshape, um, it only finished a minute after SolidWorks, not bad at all. So here we have a modeling of a wire toy. The, a wire toy is that thing that goes beep when you hit the ring on the wire. So this can be quite a challenging um, problem for tools when you have the profile of the wire turned from a circle to a square because it has to perform a, a an operation called a loft along that along that curve, um, while while the curve moves in three axes. So it's not at all clear um, whether that curve should rotate around the curve or how to solve it at all. It's it's actually got many solutions. So a lot of these packages have a lot of trouble solving this problem. Now Rhino and SolidWorks here really have no problem. Um, setting up the drawings uh, or the planes. Um, SolidWorks is a 3D modeling package which has, uh, which with ease you can set up planes at various angles with respect to each other. SolidWorks uh, is about the same. You can, you can just rotate things arbitrarily around arbitrary axes. Um, uh, on shape on the other hand, setting up planes can be a real pain and uh, you'll see later on that this, this really is why on shape loses so badly in this test. So um, Rhino already has the curve set up now, um, a nice spline curve is what it's called. And I'm already performing the loft operation in Rhino and it's, it's basically done at this point. SolarWorks very, very close behind. Um, so it's, it's, it's also basically done, only it's a, it's a surface at this point and, and I just had to fill it in. 
and they're only uh, a little under a minute between them. On shape, on the other hand, I haven't even done the profile to set up my 3D my 3D curve. Um, on shape doesn't really have the ability to do the same type of 3D curve that SolarWorks does, so it it, it is somewhat more difficult. The 3D curve it does have it does allow for splines and stuff in 3D, so that's good. That allowed this problem to be solved, but it's nowhere near as sophisticated as SolarWorks 3D tool or Rhino's um, Rhino's unconstrained drawings. Yeah, I'm still setting up planes at this point. Um, got to set up at the angle between the planes, and then I got to offset the angle from the the previous plane, and that's that's how much it takes to to set up the drawing planes in this. It's really quite a pain. So at this point I've actually got the the curve set up and I'm just doing that final spline um, spline curve which will um, hopefully end this 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 modeling exercise. Um, what I was trying to do there was make it so that the start and end were kind of uh, normal to the surface at the bottom but it really just wouldn't do it so I gave up um, Onshape is the only tool that produced such a hopeless curve by default. Um, you had to fiddle with the settings quite a lot, and even despite the time it took, it still was around double the time for Rhino, and that's that's really not very um, performant in this this test. All right, so this is going to be modeling a kettle thing. Don't know what to call it, but it's designed to kind of show a major problem that I've I've bumped into like every other day with Rhino um, when I'm doing fillet operations. Um, I, I, I have also had a similar issue with SolidWorks and with Onshape in different scenarios, but I found SolidWorks has the most robust um, fillet system of the three, but um, here you're going to see uh, Rhino really, really sucking. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here I'm creating the base plate. This is an 80 millimeter. Um, cylinder and in SolidWorks I'm just showing off the, the constraints where you can make one dimension relative to another and it's, it's actually really cool but it did slow down the the result of the SolidWorks um, the kettle thing here. In um, Rhino I'm already doing the loft but um, that's going to be about the end of Rhino being ahead um, uh, on shape really really close behind in fact on shape is seconds from finishing it is done at this point. Um, all I'm going to do is set the material and it's done. 3 minutes 44 seconds. Both SolidWorks and Rhino have um, have barely started. Um, so usually you're fighting with the tool and um, usually I'm fighting with Onshape but Onshape really had no problems with this exercise at all. So in Rhino here I'm having to manually do the fillet. Um, I'm having to, to trim the surfaces with respect to each other because if you do a fillet operation on two surfaces or on a solid in um, Rhino it will not work if you don't, if, it, if the fillet crosses over multiple surfaces. It doesn't do the trimming properly. In SolidWorks I'm just about done. Um, I'm doing the fillet using its really nice fillet engine. Um, and there you go, fillet, last fillet there and then I'm going to do an operation called shell which makes it hollow. SolarWorks just finishing up now with 6 minutes 55 seconds, really great. Um, Rhino, I'm still manually doing what looks like the simplest fillet on this whole damn thing, except for the external fillet. Um, and, <laughs> and what I'm going to do is blend between these surfaces. Um, that basically means like um, smoothly moving between them, that's what you've got here. And it, it might result in the best looking fillet. I think, I think Rhino has produced the best looking um, geometry here, but it <laughs> wow, it was a lot more work. Um, and this test by, wasn't the first time I tried this. I tried all kinds of things. Um, if you know a good way to do it, put it in the comments. But um, yeah, I found this to be a real pain. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is basically um, creating the shell. I didn't use a shell command this time because um, it failed too often and it failed worse than this offset operation. Um, but even the offset operation failed. It didn't create a solid. It, it left gaps in it, so I had to manually fill them up. Um, so Onshape finished in a third of the time of Rhino and half the time of SolidWorks. Really quite impressive for a free online browser-based tool. So why am I comparing all these apples and oranges? Well, it's because I'm really just showcasing how different the tools are. 
Um, Rhino is an excellent surface modeling tool. It's great for architecture and industrial design. SolarWorks is um, excellent for mechanical design and industrial design as well. Um, and Onshape is fabulous for the hobbyist. It's free. It's, um, uh, albeit you have to have um, publicly listed models, but the tool is free, which is really wonderful considering its capabilities are similar to the other two. Um, if I were to recommend something to an electronics engineer, I'd probably say Onshape if all you're doing is um, electronics component modeling for PCBs. Um, it's free. Why spend a whole bunch of money on something that isn't a whole bunch faster? It'll only save you a few minutes. Um, but if you're doing something like industrial design, uh, the, the, the answer is a little bit more fuzzy. SolidWorks or Rhino will probably serve you really well. Um, if you're an architect, uh, people tend to not use SolidWorks for architecture as far as I know, so probably Rhino, but um, I, I don't see why SolidWorks couldn't do it. Um, but it definitely doesn't have facilities designed for architects, whereas Rhino does. So we are clearly the winners in this. A great variety of tools available to us. Um, and, and the hobbyist community through Omnshape, really a winner. Um, FreeCAD almost made it to this video, but it wasn't really ready for some of these tests. It, it, the, the, the workflow in um, FreeCAD is, is very different to the other two, which made a video comparing the, the tool to the others very difficult. So as an example of a model you can produce in Rhino, this is a CNC machine I designed about seven years ago. It's based on galvanized steel and um, NEMA 23 stepper motors and I still use the machine today. And this is the kind of thing you can use Rhino for, a little hobbyist project. Um, and here is a uh, 3D printer I designed in SolidWorks. It's parametric so you can change one number and it changes um, the size of a whole bunch of different parts. Um, and SolidWorks made this rendering uh, as well. We also have um, this assembly here, a flippy dot assembly done in Onshape. Um, this was just a little hobby thing and I've kind of just created some photos to make an animation for you. Uh, everyone loves flippy dots, right? So if you wanted other tools compared, um, as and I already realized people are going to nag me to do all kinds of tools. Um, yeah, I'm opening the floodgates here, but leave it in the comments below. Um, if you get enough thumbs up, maybe we can do a video comparing the, the tools that you talk about in the comments. I hope you like the video. Uh, have a great day. Bye.